So I was watching this animation and it got me thinking, how can I create a particle system in Blender that uses an object to scale in and scale out objects while it moves and that animation loops seamlessly? It was pretty tough to figure that out, but I figured it out. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make that concept in Blender. First thing we need to do is create a particle system and tile that particle system so that we can ensure that the animation is going to loop because for anything to loop, the beginning and the end of the animation have to look exactly the same. Thus, we're going to tile that. So what you'll need to do is go ahead and just add in a plane and go ahead and split your window right here. We're gonna hop into geometry nodes and just do some very basic geometry nodes magic here. Click new and let's add in a cube. Throw that cube in there and we need to be exact on our dimensions here. So just make sure everything is at a scale of 10, which in real space here is gonna be at a scale of five. That's important to remember because we want this animation to loop. Next, let's add a mesh to volume node. Throw that there and then let's put some points in there with a distribute points in volume. Let's go ahead and get in a instance on points. Throw that there and let's just get any object we want. I'm gonna go ahead and use my favorite icosphere, but any object will go here, but get something low geometry just for fun for now. So now we have this, I'm gonna bring the density down just so we can have something that creates a recognizable pattern. And let's create the tile particle system. So first we'll need to be able to move this around. So we're gonna get a transform geometry and we're gonna just go ahead and move them down here just to keep everything looking nice. So now we have this and we can move this particle system around here on the X, Y, or Z. We're gonna put him back on the zero and let's, let's tile this. So just highlight these guys, I'm gonna hit Shift D, bring it up. Let's put our object right into the instance socket there and then put the points right here into the geometry and then to combine everything, we just need a join geometry node and we'll plug that right into there. And so now, remember that this thing is at a scale of 10, so get to, to get to the exact edge of this particle system to tile it, we'll just need to go ahead and hit 10 on the Y, and there we go, we now have it tiled, and then what we'll do is we'll take this and duplicate it one more time to get the third tile, and again, just go ahead and put him into the join geometry. We'll put the icosphere into the instance socket and then the points of the distribute points in volume into the geometry. And then here, we'll need to have him on the negative 10 to get to the exact opposite side of the original particle system. So negative one zero. And that's gonna ensure when we do the proximity magic, the camera, the foreground and background elements are going to be the same at all times. Now here on YouTube, I like to make really quick, more straight to the point videos when talking about these concepts. Now, if you would like a longer, slower down, kind of overly explained version of this concept, I put that on Patreon a couple days ago where I can really take my time and really show you why this works and how this works. I was able to get into the kind of the nitty gritty of this and even show you this really fun emoji scene and kind of the faces and having fun with the really creative use case of this. I also provided some really cool project files for this to really get your creative juices going. So if you wanna check that out, that is a really great way to not only support me, but learn some new stuff. So if you wanna check that out, that is gonna be linked in the bio. Lots of really cool motion design stuff there. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So let's go ahead and create that proximity system. I'm gonna bring up the density and then bring down the scale of my icosphere uh, just so we can make that look a little bit more obvious. So what we need to get is a empty to drive that proximity. So go ahead and get any empty you want. I'm gonna use a sphere because it looks nice. And then go ahead and just drag that empty right into the scene. Now let's go ahead and create a little system here. So let's first get a mesh line. And the mesh line is just creating a point. All we need is some kind of mesh data and then we're gonna do a count of one. So we have one little piece. And then let's put the location into the start location. Next, we need a geometry proximity node. Put that there and plug mesh into target and very important, switch faces to points because we wanna be playing with our points. Now let's go ahead and get a map range to make this work and then go ahead plug distance into value, and then just plug the result right into the scale of just this middle section right here, plug that into the scale, and you'll kind of see some stuff working, but we need to kind of invert what we're looking at. So put your two max to zero, bring your two min to one, and then you can play with that from max to scale this out to create this. And then you can play that play with that from min to kind of make, you know, not so, simple of a gradient outward, and you can kind of make it a little bit more harsh before you actually invert it there. 
um, but you can do just like that and that'll look really nice. And now let's just plug the result into the scale of all of our instance on points nodes. So plug this in, so plug result into scale and then plug result into scale. So now when you play with the empty in your viewport, it's actually going to, it's actually going to work. So this is working correctly now. And I'm gonna point out something very important. Any changes that you add past this section will break the loop. So if you wanna add maybe some random scale, add the random scale here rather than back here. So that's that's why we did that because the tiling is going to be very important. So any, th any change you need, any change you add to this needs to be a tiled change. Now let's actually create the looping animation. Now remember we moved everything on the Y. So let's animate this guy on the Y. So click on your empty. I'm gonna give myself 120 frames and something very important to make sure loops actually loop. We're gonna go here to the preferences into the animation tab and switch your default interpolation to linear and that's gonna keep everything consistent. So now let's go to our timeline. Let's hit the back arrow to frame zero click our empty and remember that this the cube was scaled by 10. So in real space, he was really scaled by five. And so we need to go here on the Y and go to the negative five to get to the very edge of that particle system that we tiled. Add a keyframe, go to the very end and we'll go to the positive five to do the go to the opposite side of that tiled particle system. And there we go, we now have this. Now, if we go to the very edge of the timeline and you're not too experienced with loops, you might think, how is, how is this a looping animation? Well, this loops once we add our camera. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make this window a little smaller for now. And let's add a camera to the scene so we can make this actually look like a looping animation. So add your camera, and then I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero, snap it to view. It really does not matter the location of the camera. Just put it wherever you want and then click on the empty, hold down shift, click on the camera, control P for parent, and then click object. And now the camera is going to move with our empty. And then we're about to get to the very end of the animation, restart, and we have a perfectly seamless animation. And this is really cool. Now, of course, you can see some foreground elements. If we just move that, we just look at it. We have a nice, perfect, seamless animation. And this concept is finished. We now have something really, really useful for a lot of different use cases. Um, now you'll notice some of these objects here are intersecting. So say you wanna do like a school of fish underwater for this animation. Well, we don't want those fish running into each other. So make sure in the outliner you click on the, uh, the plane or you can just title it geometry nodes or whatever. And then what you can do is just highlight these three nodes here. Let's make this window a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hit G and move it and I'm gonna hit shift and right click so that all changes go to all three nodes and we're gonna get a merge by distance. Merge by distance is going to make sure that these guys don't intersect. So what you'll need to do is just play with your distance and then here we go, we have fixed our intersection problem. So now depending on the instance you use, it'll either work really well or not work very well. So it's really dependent on your object. Now the concept that I talked about at the beginning of the video, that's it, we're done. If all you care about the concept, you can you can head home. But if you want to walk away with something really cool, which that's what I like to do on my channel, I'm not just going to leave you with something boring. Let's go ahead and quickly make something really nice. Now here, we're only using one object um, in the scene, and I want to show you a way you can actually use multiple objects in a collection. So what I'm going to do is hit shift and right click just to move this here. And go ahead and just pick whatever objects you want. You can use a collection of apples, some fish. I'm going to make a couple variations of a cylinder model. All right, so these are the objects that I created. I just did some simple Booleans where I just kind of took one of them like this and then I kind of I kind of stretched it out, scaled it down like that. And then what you can do with the Bool tool add-on, which comes with Blender by default, you can just create a hole just like that. So I did that a few times on some objects. Let's just throw some cylinders in there and we'll get them ready to add some materials. Or again, using whatever objects you want to use. So I'm gonna pick this guy. I'm gonna go over here to this window that we created. I'm gonna switch it over to the shader editor. I'm gonna click new and we are gonna go to the material preview window. And I wanna go ahead and get in a mix shader. We're gonna make a relatively simple shader here. I'm gonna hit shift D and then plug that there. And then I'm gonna make one of these guys in nice orange color. And then let's go ahead and tell them where to actually place them. So we're gonna get in a 
a color ramp here and we're going to need a gradient. And with the node wrangler add on enabled, we're just going to hit control T and use the object coordinate plug color here and then plug the color ramp here. So now we're playing with a gradient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this uh, linear over here to a constant because we want a solid edge and the, to differentiate here, make it look nice, nice, cool and modern. And then right here on the rotation, let's see which one do we need? So we're gonna do negative 90 degrees on the rotation of this gradient. Actually, we'll do positive 90 because I want the orange on this side. And then you can move the location to here. My friend said this looks like a nerf uh, bullet, which I kind of agree now. And then what I'm gonna do now is just select this guy, hold down shift, select him, and then holding down shift, select this last one, and then we'll hit control L for link, and then we'll add our material. So now we have these. And then this guy, I'm gonna click new, let me hit period to find that node. I'm just gonna make him transmissive or glass, and then make that roughness right down something like that. Now I'm gonna click back on this guy. I want the orange to actually be subsurface. So we're going to add some subsurface to the orange node. And then I'm going to go here to cycles, which means I need to switch this guy over here to cycles. And I'm going to hit the drop down and get a uh, default HDRI. So this is subsurface, but I want to play with um, the, the scale a little bit so that I can let in a little bit more light to make it look a little bit more subsurface like and then maybe we can bring up the uh, roughness. So now we have this, maybe maybe we don't like that. Something like, just, just subsurface like enough to make it look really cool. And then maybe brighten up that orange. All right, cool. So now we have our objects and then maybe this guy over here, this other principled node could be more of a gray. There we go, that looks nice. All right, so now we can actually go ahead Highlight your objects, hit M and add them to a new collection. I'm gonna call them tubes. And then let's click back here and go back to geometry nodes. And then make sure you select the plane so that you can actually see your nodes. And right here in the icosphere, right where we added them, we can actually go ahead and delete that. I'm gonna go over here and hit zero to my camera view. And then right here in the tubes collection, just drag it straight into here and then we'll plug it in and it's not going to look right. So the first thing we need to do is click on separate children and reset children, and that's gonna place them here, um, but it's not really working properly yet. On all of our instance on points nodes, we need to click on pick instance, and that will randomly pick um, the instances that you wanna use. And then now what we need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and get a scale instances node, because it doesn't give us any ability to edit these guys here. So we need to kind of force that. So so now what we need to do is actually play with the scale because it's kind of out of control and we don't have any control of it. So what we can do here is actually control some of the uh, objects. So I'm gonna hit shift and right click here on the map range. We're gonna get a vector math node so we can combine some things and switch this over to multiply. And then you can just kind of control the scale on all of them uniformly, if that's the right word, all just kind of the same. And then we can look and see, yeah, this is working properly. So this is cool, this is nice, we like it. Um, and you can actually add randomness. So you can add a random value node and then plug that into the vector instead and actually play with some randomness of this as well if you want to add a little bit more creativity into this scene. Now they are intersecting, but for this, I actually kind of like the intersection. Now all we need to do is add some lighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this window up and then bring open a window here so I can view the render in kind of a smaller window. Then I'm going to bring it over and click on this. So now we see a scene. Let's bring our world brightness down to black and let's add in a area light. I'm gonna hit G to move it around, something like this. And then I'm gonna hit R twice to point it right at my scene. I'm gonna switch this over to a disc and give my power of 5,000, which is really too bright. I'm kind of overcompensated here. Let's do 1,000 and then bring that spread down till you kind of see like a circle like this, and so that'll help you kind of pinpoint exactly where your lighting is located, and I like this because it's more of a modern look 
um, for lighting, which I really have been in love with lately. So now we have this, so you can bring that spread back up a little bit. And then let's get a background for this animation. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, Mesh, I mean Plane, sorry, RX90 to uh, move it. And then let's move it back. We'll make it you know, significantly far back. And then I'm gonna move it to the right and then down, and then I'm gonna scale it up. And then just kind of fit it in the bounds of our camera. And then what we can do is get another area light hit G and move it back. Again, move it over to a disc. And then in the transform settings, I'm going to rotate it by negative 90 degrees. So that's hitting this back wall. Then I'm gonna scale it up and give it a brightness of 10,000. So that's gonna really brighten up this back wall. And then what I can do is just kind of move it around and maybe scale it back down a little bit or not. Maybe bring that spread down and then I'm gonna hit R twice just to kind of rotate it to create kind of a vignette um, for the edge of this animation. And then this back wall, we can give it a new material and just make it maybe kind of blue, something like that. And then there we have it. I'm thinking this backlight is a little too bright. So let's try like 6,000. I think that's a lot better. Something like this is pretty good. And then if you wanna kind of force correct everything, you can go to your color management and bring that exposure down to get a better looking scene. There we go. So for our light, I'm gonna hit G and just kind of point it a little bit better at our tubes. Sweet, that looks pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how this render looks at kind of full screen and uh, get our original lighting, and there we go. This is our animation. If I press play in cycles, we get a really nice scene, and of course this highlighted a problem that we have. So let's get that light pointed back correctly where it needs to be, so somewhere like point it there, and click on your, um, there are three things that need to be parented to the empty, which is this guy here, which is controlling everything. So select your two area lights, select the plane, and then select the empty, I'm gonna hit Control P and click on Object. And that is gonna parent everything to this scene, which means now this animation is going to be a seamless loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my light and just kind of bring it over a little bit. I don't want it pointing so aggressively directly at my scene. All right, there we go. So this is you know, something you can walk away with from this tutorial as having something cool to render and export some glass, some subsurface. It looks cool, it looks fun. Uh, but at the end of the day, the concept is what I wanted to show you guys. So there you go. That is how to create this concept with the scaling in and scaling out with geometry and also making it loop. Uh, again, if you wanna check out that much longer, more explained version of this concept, that is going to be on Patreon and there's just so much more stuff on there. It's a great way to support what I'm doing. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.